artistic. What's up, Miss Harvey? I'm at MoMA Whoa. with Mo and my friend Aaron. No, Mo and then Ma. Is that it? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, bye, Miss Harvey. That's really good, though. Like, I'm actually impressed. <laughs> So these are the first pieces that I saw when I walked into this specific floor of the museum and they're really large white pieces made with I think rapidograph or some sort of like pen. I'm thinking like how do they make it look so perfect and how is it so like the straight lines are so nice and everything. They would have to use like a ruler or something and I found out like through reading the little description thing that all these pieces made were actually just traced and so I mean obviously it had to be some sort of room or something like that and so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it like cheating but I don't know I feel like it could have more impact on me if I knew that they weren't traced because of how clean and minimalistic it is. The piece itself does look really really nice but I think it takes away sort of factor when you uh, when you realize like oh it, it was just a picture and they just traced it you know what I mean? So considering all those other pieces were traced do you think they would trace that size or do you think like it's just like blown up. No, he just threw on a piece of paper and then they just dragged the side. <laughs> but like... <laughs> I didn't bring any crayons. So for these pieces here, they all take up the entire wall and it's just like, wow, they're huge, huge pieces. And if you actually look at it, like this piece here, that one is actually one of the drawings that the artist traced before. Um, I think my takeaway from these big, big pieces is that the size of the piece can make a big impact. So I think the fact that those pieces plus the traced ones were really, really big, it kind of makes you like look at everything and you want to look at all the little details. And I'll probably mention this later in another museum gallery visit because I saw some of the other big pieces but like when the piece is really big what you do is you end up looking at like small small details to look at like how they did it and like what went into it and stuff like that so I think big pieces are like just really visually appealing and they make the audience look closer. On the other hand you have pieces like these that are really really tiny and it's just like well first of all how did they do that and second of all making something tiny also makes the audience want to look at it more and it might just be like because like I do art whatever like I want to look at the big pieces and see how people do it because it can apply to how I do my learning in class but like for the small ones like obviously you're gonna look into the details because there's not much to look at especially for this piece it's literally just a tiny drawing and so i don't know I, it like draws more attention to it because it's very absurd and not normal i'll just do like really intellectual voiceovers so here I am with my super intellectual voiceover that has taken me like 50 million times to retake. Um, these three pieces are a triptych where the artist took the same photo and just made them all different kind of colors. Um, and these pieces actually remind me of this piece I saw at the Whitney Museum of like these shower heads where it was all the same kind of base but then the artist just decided to do different colors for each of the different pieces to make them into one poly tip. I like love when I can connect art from different museums to each other because it just shows like how art is one like big collaborative thing and everybody contributes to other people's ideas. I love seeing things that connect from different places. Condensation more like concentration. Um, I don't really know if I would count this as a takeaway, but like normally people will make fun about how like you go to an art museum and you just see like a white canvas and you're just like, how does it get into such a famous art museum? It's just funny because it's like, it's literally just because the artist's reputation is so good that they can literally just draw like scribble on a piece of paper and their art will get featured into like MoMA. And I just like, I don't know, it's funny to me. That's real. Ka -ka. <laughs> Does it look like it? For my final takeaway, it's about all these pieces that are made out of road signs. And I think my takeaway for this one is that art like doesn't have to be made out of conventional things. And obviously like, duh, like we do that in 3D. Like these are things that already exist and they look cool. But the fact that the artist just went ahead and made them even look cooler by like making them look damaged and adding holes in them. And like the way that he assembled it together, like it makes it look really cool. But at the same time, it makes me question like, where did he get the signs from? Cause I don't know, like I'm sure he didn't steal them, but it's cool to me. <laughs> So here's a recap of my four takeaways. The first one talking about the traced pieces and how it's working smarter, not harder, and how the piece still turned out nice even though it was a lot easier to make than copying it off a photo. Uh, the second one is the size of the piece makes an impact, and so that's referring to the big wall pieces. 
The third one is the connection between pieces from different museums and how it gives you a broader perspective on how all artists relatively think the same. And then the fourth one is not having to use conventional materials and using the materials to your advantage. This last piece here is a piece that Mo and I just thought was really cool. Um, basically what the artist did was she put balloons full of paint on the top of the piece and then took a bunch of darts and just threw at the at the canvas until the, all the balloons popped and just ran down the piece and it's just like that's a really fun way to do art. <laughs>